Hello ladies and gentlemen, Holotide here, and today we're going to be going over my Season 3 First Impressions. I did wait over a week to make this video. I wanted to play the game enough. I wanted to take part in the events and see the first weekly update. Um, I wanted to see if they were going to issue a patch for some stuff, so... Yeah, I'm, I didn't want to do like a 24-hour immediate, you know, impression because I feel like it's either going to be too hyped or not enough hype. I, I feel like it goes, you know, either way at that point. So before we get into the video, if you like Halo and Halo content and you don't want to hear somebody just complain but offer, you know, constructive criticism and hold, you know, the developer accountable sometimes, um, but also... You know, talk about the the wins that 343 is having, then this is the place for you. So go ahead and subscribe. We're going for 15k this year. It would be a huge help to the channel if you decide to join up. So season three launched a week ago to a lot of hype and expectations. New maps, a new weapon, game modes, equipment, armor core, so on and so forth. This was really looking like it was going to be the start of the future of Halo Infinite, the foundation we've been looking for. But has it been so far? So we're gonna go over the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, you know what, let's just go over the bad first. With the launch of the new season, many maps and modes were left out or reverted back to the original release. I'm not really sure, but a lot of modes and a lot of maps are left out of quick play. You know, like the new Empyrean pit map is like just completely out of quick play now. So they also brought back one flag CTF on launch pad. I forget, what is that? Launch site? I don't remember the name of the map. Um, so that's kind of weird. I don't really know if anybody has said anything. I tried to look up to see if there were any devs that said why this happened, but I haven't been able to find anything. There's also been issues with frames on console and PC and issues in customization. Honestly, I have not had these issues on PC, but I do think that it's important that I would mention them, especially since there was a patch that came out that supposedly will include fixes for the 120 hertz option on the Xbox consoles, armor, hall stability, flag juggling, stuff for custom browsers, and a whole bunch more. Um, so that came out. And again, I can't see a, a, you know, a huge improvement, but if you have had these issues, let me know in the comments down below if this patch fixed that for you. Another issue has been around the shop. You know, this might just be ugly. <laughs> I, I, it's bad. While 343 hasn't spoken or talked about or confirmed cross course since I think last August, it does seem like we are getting cross-core coatings in the shop, but it's just in bundles of 16 different coatings that cost way too much, in my opinion. And it also looks like some coatings are going to be sold separately that are technically cross-core. It's the same coating. It might have a different name, but it doesn't look like it's going to be a part of a bundle. That's not good. Not good. Not good. Not good. Not great. Not, not acceptable, really. I honestly think... We are not going to get true cross-core coatings. Uh, that might be... I don't know if that's a hot take or not, but I think that we're going to get a few universal options each season. And honestly, I would like for 343 to just go ahead and rip the band-aid off and just tell us what is happening with cross-core. You know, we got visors, and yeah, <laughs> I feel like, you know, something needs to be said. I, I feel like every time I get on Twitter... You know, people are asking, where's CrossCore? What's happening with CrossCore? And I think that it would be, you know, I don't know. I, I feel like if it's not going to happen, people are going to be upset. But at least we would know, you know. At least we could, I guess, start to get over it. Uh, I don't know if that's true. I don't want to say get over it. But um, any type of communication from 343 would be appreciated when it comes to that. Um, I don't really know if this is the bad or the ugly, but, um, you know, the maps, I, I really do like the big team battle map, uh, Oasis, but Cliffhanger and Chasm, I, I like how they look, I don't know, it's just kind of weird, um, I don't know, let me know in the comments how you feel about the maps, I think that it can go both ways, they could be good or bad depending on the person, so, I'm gonna leave that one up, 
A lot of people are saying they're having networking issues and desync and um, ping issues and stuff like that. I have had probably an increase in um, connecting to servers where I get like over 100 ping, which is weird. That didn't happen to me before. Um, and it stinks because I feel like for some reason when you play Halo at high ping, man, it is, it is a little rough compared to other games. So, um, honestly, I, I hope that they can fix that. I, I really do. I feel like desync and the networking stuff is just such an off-putting experience for people that aren't just huge Halo fans, you know. Um, if you hop on just the, to play the game and you're going to have a bad experience with lag and stuff, like, why would you keep playing? So... I will put that in the bad category. All right, let's move on to the good um, as of right now. I think that we might do like a season three wrap up thing um, and talk about the bad, but maybe some of these good things will go into the bad category uh, depending on how they age. So we will see what happens. So my first thing that I, I think of when I think of the good with season three is the new cutscene cinematic things that uh, 343 has made there. I think they're amazing, honestly. The graphical fidelity, uh, the quality, it has gone way up, in my opinion, and I'm very happy to see that. It looks like, I don't know if Blur made the cutscenes, but man, um, keep doing that. Whatever you're doing, keep doing that. The narrative is actually interesting. I'm not going to spoil anything. Um, there are a lot of spoilers going around on the internet, so I don't want to ruin anything. Just know that I think that the the narrative and the cutscenes, the cinematics are definitely a step up, and I hope that they continue to keep going up. We also have three new events. We have Mindfall, which gets a 10-tier free event pass for the Mirage Core. We're getting the Fracture event Firewall, which is March 21st. Um, 21st, excuse me. And it's got a 20 tier uh, free event pass for the Chimera Core. And then there's the uh, third event, which is Sight Unseen. And I think that that ties into the Mindfall event. And you will get a 10 tier free event pass focus on the Mirage Armor Core. And I assume that that's not like a new event pass. That's just what I have written down. I assume that it's the one from Mindfall. But um, I like how they, they came out with the double whammy for the events um back to back i think that that was smart especially now since the seasons are only three months it feels more packed instead of more you know dead time going back to the maps uh we have the btb map oasis i like it cliffhanger looks cool i don't know how well it plays really chasm is cool looking again i don't know how awesome it plays and then we're supposed to get a plaza remake later on in season three so hopefully that one's good i think that that will be made in forge but overall i like the maps more than i dislike them there was also a bunch of uh quality of life improvements menu backgrounds were updated like the campaign menu and multiplayer menu they've been updated chief now stands in his little ship pelican thing and it looks great uh, I know we don't love the shop, but there were changes to the shop to indicate when an item is new or if it's on sale, what category it is, and so on. There will also be a half-week slot, which will refresh every Tuesday and Friday, so that's good too. Dailies will actually refresh every day, and there will be more offers. During the season, they also updated the, uh, the UI and UX, which I think the whole game needs, really, but... Yeah, you know, it, it, the shop is the shop. They also updated the uh, post-game report, so it looks a lot better. And the medals that you have, um, they have, like, shaded tiles to indicate how rare it is. I actually like that change. There are a ton of Forge updates. They added dev-made maps to be edible. Edible? What the heck? Am I hungry? Editable. I still don't know if I said that right. <laughs> With Season 3. And also make custom game modes based around land grab and total control so that's cool they also did a bunch of custom game updates and bug fixes when it comes to hcs and the professional competitive side of things there was a lot of rebalancing done they also made it to where the placement matches for rank go from 10 to 5 so you don't have to play as many games and then plaza will be put into the uh the map rotation 
They also said that uh, several bug fixes and optimizations are coming. They haven't actually came yet, but are coming to fix the instances of desync and increase network reliability. So fingers crossed. They also added ray trace sun shadows. I don't use that. And they also, uh, they updated the ghost um, to have new visual effects when it's getting messed up. So that's actually really cool. So overall right now, my, like, I'm trying to look at season three in a vacuum because if we compare it to the previous seasons, I mean, it's, it's so far and above anything else that we've had so far in Halo Infinite that I don't think it's fair um, because if I do that, then this update is like a nine out of 10. Um, so looking at it in a vacuum as it is right now, a little over a week into the season, I'm at a solid 7 out of 10. Um, I, I just hope that they keep improving. Um, I hope that the narrative is not lackluster as we go on. And really, if they can get the desync and networking issues down, man, I, I, I feel like it'll be a really good season. If this is what we can expect going forward, that's great. I, I would love to have a 7 out of 10 season all the time. That would be a consistently good season. I would love that um, because it's, it, I don't know, the, the previous seasons and the winter update, you know, we can't go 10 months without a new season. I know that the winter update was kind of like season 2.5, um, but it was rough. So that's my review, my first impressions of season three. Let me know in the comments down below how you all feel. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like. If you're new to the channel and you love Halo, make sure you subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.